and now my bumper scuffed up. Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. Here we are. This is a 6x12 U-Haul trailer. I think this will fit my car. I got these ramps. And if I come in here, that looks like it'll fit. Well, the door has to close, but I'm pretty sure this will fit. And once I'm in here, I'll use these tie down points around here to strap the car down. Oh, great. This one's broken. Um, all right, I'll figure something out. Should be okay with one at least. These are my Reese Explore foldable ramps. They're aluminum and they're supposedly good for 1,500 pounds. The car is roughly 1,500 pounds. It's a little bit more, but or plus me, it's okay. They're a little bit springy. Let's kind of see. Uh, I guess some of that is the trailer too. folded in all the way. Yeah, that looks good there. This fits. It's really, uh, it's not too bad. Seems to be okay. Should be able to strap it down over here. But we know a five foot opening this car can get through. Let me get in there, take a better look at what's going on. I think my passenger side has a little bit more room. This works out. The, uh, the front hook here is on the left side. I can bolt it down to that D-ring and I can just ignore this. Well, yeah, I guess this was a success. I was able to get the car in by myself fairly okay. And uh, car fits all right. Just got to strap it down now. It is troublesome to get in and out of the car now. You have to kind of wedge your way in between the door and the side of the thing. It might be easier to just reach into the car, drop the e-brake, and then just with the help of some other people help roll the car out. It may be the same case coming in. However, I was brave enough here to drive the car in just based off of basic math. I measured the car with the mirrors folded in. I trusted the five foot hole. And um, you know, if it's smaller than five foot, it'll drive through here. And this will work. So you're looking at me and wondering how I get into this thing now. So this is how it works. You have to face the wall. Open the door and start slinking in like this. Oh man. Once your legs are curled in, you're ready to go. Look at that. Same thing to get out. Put your right foot out and you slink your head out this way like this. And ta-da. So if you're any fatter than me, you know, it, it's not a good time.
it is all tied up. It should be tight and it's not gonna go anywhere. I got a cross point from this here and that way to that way. There's one in the front. Can't really show you because it's dark, but this ain't going anywhere. Uh, I don't know the weight distribution of this car. It would be better to put the heavier side in the front if there is such a thing. If it's like 45-50, it doesn't really, or 45-55, it doesn't really matter. Um, because I'm only concerned about that because of how it looks. See how the trailer's kind of like teetering that way? You can probably see it better over here. But it just might be because of how high my hitch is and it's just picking up the whole thing to tilt it like that. Uh, it should be okay. This thing weighs like three tons. Should be plenty to keep this under control. It's probably not how that works, but in my mind, I can accept that. Ah, look at that. Tow with your car. Tow with my car. With my cara. In the... Ah. All right, it's bright and early now. Uh, car is loaded in here. I think I have everything I need. I got my ramps back here. Let's double check I have everything before I go. Uh, got earplugs for the dyno. Got my ramps right here. All right, looks good. I just noticed I actually have the, I have a Canadian trailer. Well, off I go. It's probably the least shady way I've towed my car so far and uh, it's not exposed to the elements, it doesn't have its doors stuck open and just tied up. Uh, it's, it's just a little bit shady because it's in a tiny little box. <laughs> We're almost at the shop and I've been on the highway a little while now, almost an hour, and the trailer rides okay. I could definitely feel that it's back there. It's probably the heaviest trailer I've towed. Um, there's some kind of resonance where there's like a little vibrating frequency through the vehicle. It's, it just feels like an unbalanced wheel, so maybe the trailer has a bunch of unbalanced wheels and it's just kind of bouncing around. Um, let's take a look at some of the trailer info. So I've driven about 35 miles. The average fuel economy is 10.3 according to the car. It's not great. It's a 6.2 liter V8. It's a three ton brick and now I'm towing a, a one or two ton brick in the behind me, so it, it is what it is. Um, it's not that bad actually, because usually around the city I get about 13 anyways. Um, I think on longer road trips I get somewhere around 18 to 20, depending on the, the type of road. So in the grand scheme of things, it's about right. Uh, it's not the most efficient trailer I've towed. Uh, I've towed the, the vehicle hauler before. I think that was the most efficient. It was around like 14, 13, 14 miles per gallon. I forget exactly what it was, but it was close to normal driving. It kind of makes sense because that trailer is not like a barn wall like this uh, being plowed through the air. It was also probably the lightest trailer. Um, that, therefore, it all kind of adds up and makes sense. So no drag and and lightweight so minimal effort on the engine it was probably the like i could tow it in normal mode or touring mode as the car calls it for this drive i had to put it onto uh tow haul mode because i felt it, like the transmission was a little sluggish otherwise like it kept wanting to upshift and it's too heavy to do it well that's bad the car moved from the front and now my bumper scuffed up what happened let me squeeze in here and find out but yeah, so this is bad. This is a bad idea, don't do this. Um, luckily, I do plan on having my car repainted, so this is not a big deal. And it looks like it might be able to buff out anyways, so it's fine. Uh, yeah, okay. Woo, it's cold out there. So I know the six by 12 cargo trailer fits the car and it's probably the best choice because it actually encloses the car. Uh, therefore, you're not going to have any problems with like rock chips on the window. Uh, it's not going to get dirty from salt, whatever. Everything's protected inside. However, the 6x12 enclosed cargo trailer is the largest trailer you can rent from U-Haul. And it barely fits. So you, can, you can wedge yourself in there. You can wedge yourself out. It'll make do. Uh, it costs 30 bucks for a day. So if you're only doing this once or twice ever, it's not that big of a deal. 
I plan on doing this more often and this is probably highly inconvenient. So I think it's time for me to start looking into getting my own trailer. Uh, something that's at least six foot wide would fit that car perfectly fine. The door, I mean, it is six foot wide, but the door opening isn't six. I don't really know much about trailers. I think there's like seven foot wide ones or whatnot. So I'll have to look into stuff like that. And another problem is I don't really have anywhere to put a trailer. There's just no, like, where can I store it? I'll probably have to look into where I can store a trailer too. Uh, it's just easier just to have one on hand and use whenever I want just because I need it right now and I don't have to schedule some time, pick it up, drop it off, and then deal with stupid stuff like that where it doesn't fit. It just fits but doesn't fit. Um, I'll show you a couple clips of the prior U-Haul trailers I rented. I rented every trailer that is capable of holding a K car in there now and I put my Suzuki Kara in there. Uh, I had the 6x12 utility trailer with the ramp that fit perfect, but the doors had to be open or you had to have no mirrors. Um, you had like this much of space on both sides. So either no mirrors or doors closed. I mean, sorry, or doors up. It looked great because the doors were up and the car drove in and then you would try to close the door after all that struggle and panic only to find out the door would hit the railing on the side and that was terrible. Uh, and then the other one is the actual vehicle hauler. That thing would work. It's probably the safest option to use with the least amount of hassle. The only problem with that is you just have to get comfortable with how to align your car up the ramps. Uh, the ramps are further apart than the deck of the, uh, the, the hauler. Um, and with my particular offset of wheels, it seems like I have a little bit more offset. They would sit completely on the deck and not on the little bit of a, the lip on the deck. Uh, however, I had to hang about an inch or two off of the ramp to just to roll up there because for some reason the, the ramps are wider than the deck. doesn't really make sense to me. Uh, it's fine for any car, any normal car, but for a little narrow K okay cars, yeah, it's, it's okay. It's not bad. I have a method for that. So I think from now on, I'll probably just rent the vehicle dolly if I don't get my own trailer. And what I would do is I would reverse the car onto the, the trailer and that way it would clear the, 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 the front lip of the trailer and that way I won't hit the, the front bumper. The rear bumper is a lot higher than the front. It should be okay. Plus the weight would be much closer to the uh, hitch. It does cost more though. It's about $60 per day. Um, the cargo, both cargo things are much cheaper than the car hauler, but it is what it is for, for ease of use and uh, some peace of mind where you're not kind of trying to squeeze through a hole about that big. Thanks for watching. These are your U-Haul trailer options for hauling your K-Car. Uh, remember to subscribe and like the video if you enjoyed what you saw today and come back for more. I'll see you next time.